Greetings, I'm Teak, and this is the show where I go over things that were of interest to me in the last week. Fortunately, I have a great many interests, so there's probably something for you here too. And here we go again. Now that Zack Snyder is officially getting a crack at finishing his Justice League movie, Suicide Squad director David Ayer is weighing in on getting a second chance on his DC cinematic entry. Ayer took to Twitter on Saturday to share info about his original vision of the movie and what happened between that and the tonally inconsistent cut that ultimately hit theaters. Specifically, Ayer took aim at some of the factors that caused Warner Brothers to change course on the movie mid-production. He says that critical reviews of Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice spooked Warner Bros. leadership into shying away from the darker elements of Snyder's tone. This, followed up by the unprecedented success of the Deadpool movie, led to Ayer being pressured to shift his dramatic and sad vision of Suicide Squad into something more comedic. The cut material from Ayers' original version has long been a sticking point with the movie. Jared Leto, in particular, has spoken out about how much of his role in the movie was filmed but never seen thanks to various reshoots. According to Ayer, a director's cut of Suicide Squad would be relatively easy to complete, so who knows, maybe by 2022, HBO Max will want another exclusive do-over of a DC adaptation. Meanwhile, bad news if you were looking forward to going back to a more civilized age with Star Wars The High Republic. As with most things these days, the launch of the various novels, set centuries before The Phantom Menace, have been delayed, with the first books now scheduled for release in January of 2021. For things that are coming out soon, Alex Ryder premieres this week on Amazon Prime. The eight-episode season is an adaptation of the book series of the same name about a teenager who ends up in the world of espionage after discovering that his deceased father was a secret agent. And in video games, releasing this week on Steam is Fear of the Dark, a 16-bit styled retro horror game that looks like if Resident Evil was an RPG for the Super Nintendo. Ninja Scarf is a kinda neat looking 2D action platformer, seems that there've really been a bunch of these ninja themed games with cool art styles coming out recently. And also on Steam is the Command & Conquer Remastered Collection, bringing the original game and its three expansions up to date with 4K graphics and a new soundtrack. Meanwhile, over on the Epic Game Store, Borderlands The Handsome Collection is this week's free game, offering up Borderlands 2 and Borderlands the pre-sequel in one package. And on the Switch this week, we have Liberated, a cool-looking indie shooter with a really neat comic book style that looks like a real page-turner. Also hitting the Switch is The Outer Worlds, if you want to take your space RPG fun on the go. And finally, Out Buddies DX, which is a very Metroid-inspired game that has you investigating the sunken ruins of a city dedicated to an old god. That leaves us with this week's awesome video. Sasha from Casually Comics is here to deliver the behind-the-scenes story of Stargirl, if you're looking for some background information before checking out the new show. Get ready for your feels to, well, activate. That's it for this week, so how much more of Jared Leto's Joker do you want to see? Let me know in the comments. Be sure to subscribe to my channel for more videos, and maybe give me a like if you think I deserved it. I hope you enjoyed this video, and have a great week. Oh yeah, and the United States has gone back to space. For the first time in almost a decade, Americans went to space on an American rocket, and for the first time ever, that rocket was a privately owned spacecraft. After a cancelled launch earlier in the week, SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket launched from the Kennedy Space Center, carrying NASA's Bob Benkin and Doug Hurley into space for a ride to the International Space Station. The successful launch is a big milestone for SpaceX, which has been working towards putting astronauts back into space since NASA contracted with them in 2016. With a successful launch behind it, all that's left for the Crew Dragon capsule is to meet up with the International Space Station for an automated docking. Barring complications, the two astronauts should arrive not long after this video comes out. Once their mission is complete, at some point in the next 6-16 to 16 weeks, Benkin and Hurley will get back into the Crew Dragon capsule and ride it back to Earth. Meanwhile, SpaceX and NASA will be studying the heck out of every aspect of the launch as they prepare for the next steps, which could involve anything from more regular flights to the ISS to revisiting the moon. Congratulations to everybody involved on land, air, sea, and beyond.